away from the thing that's trying so it's coming this way i want to move away from power that's where you want to go naturally all right so today's video is actually in response to a comment where uh, somebody asked if we have any different ideas for defending a push kick rather than just trying to catch it and yeah we've got a few ideas the story was that they keep getting caught on fakes. So the person will fake the teep and they go to catch it and then they're getting punched in the face. So we'll talk about a whole bunch of different things you can do. Starting with the classic, what we call downward parry. First thing when you're drilling this, make sure you're not missing the kick for them, all right? So sometimes it's good, especially with new people, just give me a little one. Okay, he's actually gonna hit me. Excellent, now I actually know that when I do the block, I did the block. A basic rule, it doesn't have to be followed, but it's a good one, is that left leg should be blocked by left hand and vice versa. And so if he throws that lead teep, when I downward parry it like that, I'm blocking to the outside of the ankle and I put him in the position that I put him in, okay? Now I just used my arm and realistically that can happen. Uh, they throw the teep up and you, whoa, you just get it out of the way, right? Ideally, we might put a bit of movement to it. There's two things you can do. When someone tries to hit you, the tendency is to move away from the thing that's trying, so it's coming this way. I wanna move away from power. That's where you want to go naturally. That's why people back up when they're getting attacked. So you can can use that. He throws the teep, I'll step, slide back a little bit and I'll do that downward parry, turning them that way and a really classic follow-up would be to just boot them in the back of the leg. So he does that. Again. You don't have to kick them in the back of the leg. Uh, he throws the teep. You can kick up to the front. In Muay Thai, kicking people in the back is legal. It can actually be quite high scoring because you're putting people off balance with it. So if it's Muay Thai rules, you can boot them right in the back. He throws the other one. I can do the same positioning with my feet. I'm not gonna try to do the equivalent thing. I'm orthodox. I'm not gonna try to switch to southpaw. So he does that again. The footwork was the same. I moved back. I did my downward parry. Um, and then same thing, I can kick the leg or I can kick up to the body. Throws the teep. Throws the teep. And if it's Muay Thai, you can kick him right in the back. A couple notes is, let's do this angle. Throw the teep slowly. I don't need to parry all the way out to here. Don't over parry. Once you've got your arm past your body, the teep probably won't hit you, okay? One more time. Good, all right. Um, this guy knows how to do a question mark kick, so I'm gonna have him do that with his rear leg. So first he throws a teep, and boom. He notices I'm doing this, or I'm trying to catch the kick. So then he does, go ahead, boom. This is why, another reason, why I think right for right and left for left, okay? Um, if I'm doing left for right, I'm leaving that side open. So keep that other hand up, try to go to the outside ang angle, but sorry, outside of the ankle. But if you go inside, it's probably gonna work and you're only gonna get question mark kicked, probably, if you've done it too many times in a row. So don't sweat it if you use the wrong hand, but just try to catch on that they might catch on. Now we're gonna talk about something uh, called the hollow out, or just like you can hop back and hunch. And the idea is similar in that I'm just gonna get out of the way. The thing comes towards me, I just put my butt back. Now you can get away with really not moving your back foot at all. You can just do this. Um, they might snap one up to your face. So I tend to like put a little bit of distance on it. Uh, so he throws and I'll, I just slide back. Uh, someone said it to me once, it was a great analogy. It's like you're holding like a, a glass of milk and a plate of food and you just gotta like shut, shut the fridge door with your butt. It's a good way of looking at it. He throws, you just whoop, okay? Now be aware that snap kick could come right up to your face, but you, you kind of know when it's a teep. After years of training, you know when they're trying to push you back rather than snap to the head. Um, people get it wrong, we've seen it happen, but you, you can generally tell. So he throws that teep, I'll hop back, and I can do similar counters. I don't wanna go so far back and with so much momentum that I can't overcome the inertia and then use my counter. I would ideally like to move just far enough away. Cool thing, if he throws the rear, you can do the exact same move. My daughter was doing her first tournament. We hadn't talked about teeps and she got hit 
with, with a few teats in her first round. All I showed her was just, I didn't even have her hollow, hollow out. She literally got away with this. Just like move back and then move back in. So if you add that little bit of a hunch, you'll get your body that much further away. And that's another alternative to always trying to catch a kick. We talked about the downward parry and we talked about the hollow out and both of those were moving away from your opponent. So an attack that's coming in straight line towards you, anything that's coming straight line towards you, go ahead. If you move laterally, it should come up empty. You can couple that with the downward parry, just for the sake of saying it, throws the teeth and I can, I can hop to the outside. This was essentially an insurance policy, um, but you could just move to the side. I think my tendency is to just do the downward parry by accident. I wanna move to the outside. If he throws the lead teep and I go inside, I am inside their striking radar. So if you can get to the outside, you're gonna catch that better angle. So he throws, uh, move to the side, I can kick, I can get to work. So not only are you getting out of the way of the teep, you're also landing yourself a nice angle. Um, throw a slow rear teep. So you can see I'm out of, like we're out of each other's striking radar, but it's gonna be a little easier for me to turn and correct that than it is for him, right? Uh, do that again, boom. See how if he kicks through like that, when you expect contact, that happens. Um, I'm open to him and he's close to me. So it's easy enough for me to get to work off of that. So you can do that with a downward parry, but I'm gonna leave it pretty simple. Just move to the side of the teep. And the major benefit of this is, go ahead, the angle that you're on and you're still in proximity to counter. Whereas if I move away, I might have to make up that distance. Okay, so now we're gonna do one that's that's like maybe even a bit cheeky. I think Liam Harrison really likes this one. I'm wearing a shorts. Um, when somebody goes to hit you with a linear attack straight at your body, so let's say it's a jab. My hands are up, he throws. We just do this little motion here where we're kind of like scratching our ribs with our, with our elbow. You just bring it across and you'll knock that strike off to the side. Now we think about this for punches. He throws a cross, throws a jab, and we're, we're usually like, yeah, it's for punching. But if it's a, an attack that's coming straight at my body, um, then it should work if it's a teep. Throw that, that teep at me, I'm gonna catch it. It's the same trajectory as the punch. So why wouldn't that work? So something to note on this is that when you're practicing this, if you elbow somebody right in the ankle, it's awful. So in a fight, just crack them. Um, just be careful, uh, probably kick a bit slowly and probably just be careful not to crack the ankle with your elbow. It's just unpleasant and unnecessary to get good at the move. So he's gonna throw the teep and I'll boom. It works, it gets you out of the way, throws the rear and it'll get that kick out of the way. Follow-ups are all over the place. I don't even really need to tell you, but I will. If he throws that lead peep and I put him this way, I've loaded my left hook counter, head or body. If he throws the rear, now if you're in an open stance matchup, we're orthodox to orthodox here. If we're in an open stance matchup, that doesn't change. If he throws, I don't care what teep. So yeah, we're open stance. Let's still set up my hook. It shouldn't, don't worry about whether they're, they're south par orthodox. You just block to the outside of the ankle with your forearm. It's, it's just this, but smaller. It's the same idea. Just take something that's coming straight at you and redirect it to the side. The forearm parry. All right, this one is not ideal, but sometimes uh, you'll just be caught in a, in a moment of, oops, I guessed wrong. And so you can rely on this for a whole bunch of things, but when I say rely on it, I mean like as a last resort. Uh, so we call it center knee block, or also I call it the holy shit block because you got caught off guard and you're just like, holy shit. And that's essentially what you're doing is you're going here. Now I wanna try to maintain some vision on my opponent, but when he throws, it doesn't matter what teep, you can just put your knee up in the center and close up your guard. It's not much to say about it. You don't have a lot of counter opportunities. Um, as strong as I am standing on one foot, if he hits me with a bit of power, I'm probably gonna get myself knocked back. Um, but it's better than taking a nice stiff kick right in the ribs. Uh, so that holy shit block or center knee block, 
is just what it sounds like. Put your knee in the center and you're creating like a wedge that the kick won't be able to get through. So now if somebody's using the teep a lot, you can look to defend when they throw, but now you've got some data on them. Oh, they like to use the teep. They like to use the teep when I'm entering range. Um, people get really frustrated when somebody continuously does the same thing to them. And I'm thinking that's a gift. You know now what they're doing when you're trying to enter, you can use that against them. So if they're doing something really effectively repeatedly, don't get, don't get caught up with, oh, my moves aren't working. Do a different move. It's not working because you're not changing what you're doing. So I will be a little bit at range. And we've established that when I move forward, he's, he's one of these guys, he's ready to go. Okay, look at that. Okay. So you got the idea that I can bait it. Really, really basic one would be to literally just like hop and then hop back. So when I hop in, he doesn't know that I'm not going to keep going. Um, and I'm not going to press for distance on this because I'll, I'll be jumping in. Um, but if I see him on his back foot, I'll whoop, whoop and I'll just move back. So when he throws the tee, when I move forward, he's going to try to catch me entering and then you can get going. Kind of like what I told my daughter to do, uh, except I didn't necessarily have her bait the teep first. Um, the other thing you can do is you can move in. If they have really good timing, you just do this from further away for the record, okay? So when I take my step in, I can step or I can kind of hop, but as soon as I hit the ground, I'm ready to dart out to the side. So when I move, he's like, oh, time to do the teep and then you're using that lateral movement. So it's not different than the thing we did before. It's just that you drew the teep by being a little out of range. You know they're gonna throw it and you'll move in a little bit to draw it and then dart out to the side. Um, another way you can do a similar-ish move is if I've darted in a bunch of times already, I've established that when I start moving explosively, that draws a teep from them. It's funny how even if you do something that looks completely different, all they're seeing is the catalyst of your movement and they're like, damn, it's time to teep. So he's gonna teep me, <laughs> boom. Hmm. Okay, when I move again towards him, whoop, I didn't move towards him. He didn't know that I wasn't gonna move towards him, but he still threw the teep. Um, I know I kind of set him up with everything I said, but what I did there was I went directly to the side and then I took an angle approach in. So instead of jumping right into the teep, I hopped to the side to draw it. And then I used that distance I made to get in there and hit him after. So there is a defense that I see other coaches advocating. Um, and I'm gonna straight admit that this might be an issue of me not understanding how it works well. Uh, I've been taught it, but I, I just tend to stay away from it. What I, I call it a cover block. So if he throws his lead teep, you might see people doing something like that. He throws his rear teep, something like that. Uh, and it works great for those folks. My hesitancy is again, a question mark kick. So if he goes to throw that rear teep, or I think it's a rear teep, and I bang. So someone out there is gonna tell me why it's a great move, and I will gladly take their advice. I'm hesitant to do that defense. And I wanted to mention it, because someone's gonna say, what about that other block? Um, you can fill in the blanks for me and tell me why you think it's safer than I think, but I, I think that that question mark kick is a bit of a risk, so I tend not to teach or advocate that block. It's there for you, but I say be, be careful.